Today, Friday, June 16th, 2023, about 1230, I, Pat McKinley, am interviewing Elmer Hunrein at the Rocky Mountain Regional VA Medical Center in Aurora, Colorado, as part of the Remembering Our Veterans program. So, Elmer, tell me a little bit about your early childhood and your formative years and what uh, where you were born. Okay. I was born in a little town, Shenzhen, Kansas, population of 81 people. And I got, uh, of course, finished high school there and I got drafted. And I was just one month from 20 years old when they took me for basic training at Camp Chaffee, Arkansas. And then after that, I came home for nine days. Then and then I got on a, a train from little town of Hayes, Kansas, San Francisco, California. There we loaded up. We all walked right through the lines and got shots on both sides. 6,500 of us went on to to the ship, loaded on the ship, and uh, off we went. Everything was going okay. About the 13th day, we hit a typhoon, Typhoon June. And then I guess the conductor, whoever, was ordered to go ahead and try to go around it and actually happened to go right into it. <laughs> and we we were thir 13 of us that was right in my area. We all lost, well, not 13, we all lost 13 pounds mm. while we went through well. all of that. And it was, but uh, it was something. But actually, then when we we then went from there, it took us an extra three days to get out of that. Then we went from there went to Sasebo, Japan. That's where we split up four different ships. You know, going different, and at the end. I ended up Busan, Korea, then Injon, and that's where that's where I was stationed, and uh, that's where, in fact, that's where we were. And and my thing was, we're getting towards the end of the war, it was slowing down and everything, but what we ended up doing. We had tents, ten, 10 soldiers in the tents. 10 soldiers. Ten, and we went ahead and had eight Americans, two South Koreans. We were training them to start taking over for us so we could start going home. So Elmer, what year was this? This was 1953. And you were associated with what? 25th Division, 64th Field Artillery. Okay, and so you were training the Koreans to start to protect themselves and take over from uh, the Americans. Exactly right, yeah. Okay. That was it. Yeah, so then from there on, we went on. And it was still pretty lively, you know, where we had to go and be prepared to go ahead and be on the move anytime, you know, anytime they wanted us, or not wanted us, where we had to move. Then we'd go out six, eight miles different directions on account of incoming and everything. But we went ahead then, and while we were moving, all we had is one of them little tents that one man tent. We would Put her out there if you had time or chance to sleep. You you move it out there, 
you'd be laying on rock and stuff and just on that one tent, you know, to, and we had to separate real far apart, you oh. know, yeah. So, so we, there was still action? Oh, yeah. They hadn't had an armistice or anything like that yet? There was not, a, not at that time, okay. no, yeah. So, uh, How far were you from the front, do you remember? 16 miles because I was in the 105 Housers. Yeah, I started out was the 155, which is 11, uh, approximately 11 miles from the front. Then as things eased off, well, then they went ahead and moved us back. And so then I actually ended up when, with the 105 Housers uh, to go ahead and uh, uh, where I, actually finished out my duty with the 105s, yeah. How long were you in Korea then? What? Oh, I was there a long time. I was, uh, in fact, when I went over, the time I went over, I stayed there. I was in, uh, in Korea in the rice paddies, and in fact, it ended up that I was actually more or less in the cleanup, you know, there was a lot of, lot of cleanup too. It was cleanup and, and everything else, and that's when we were still training the South Koreans, you know. What was your most vivid memory during this time period? What sticks out in your mind or a couple items that you remember? That uh, every so often where we had a, hook on at the beginning especially, hook on to our equipment. Our trucks had to be quite a ways from our guns and everything, and they had to go ahead and have, of course, the ammo and everything under trees or whatever to hide out. And my most vivid thing was I uh, was, we were sleeping in bunkers. Mm. With groups of of six, so six on, six off, six off. But you couldn't leave the bunker. You had to be in the bunker. And the most vivid is, I used to write, like to write letters to my girlfriend. But all we could use was a candle. Mm. Lay in the corner in the candle. That Even was, in the bunker, you could only have a candle. A candle, no <laughs> lights, you know, and yeah. on overhead and everything. Yeah, yeah everything was camouflage. Everything was camouflage. Yes, yeah, so, uh, and uh, and the greatest thing, and that's, I went ahead and every week, my wife, well, she became my wife. She wrote me a letter. Every day, at least five, and sometimes when we were from our position, and everything, I would, I would go ahead and not get mail for five, six days. Mm -hmm. Back in them days, they didn't. December two, but uh, I didn't know when I got all them letters whether I was reading number two, number five, <laughs> number. Th Number seven, you know, so, but it was, uh, it was something, and in the end, it all worked out. I, she was just a little young girl. She was 15 when I met her in high school. I was a senior. She was a freshman, and we met in high school, and, but Grandpa, which is, became a father-in-law, just says, Young man, you better find yourself something to do. She ain't gonna gonna marry you. You get a little wooshy wooshy now. <laughs> <laughs> and he says so. Uh, but anyway, I reached in my pocket. Eleven days later, I was on the bus to California. Oh boy! I left him for two years. When I came back, he did say. 
by golly, he says, and now if you're still in love and all that, and she loves you, I give you permission to get married. Outstanding. Yeah, and we got that. Got married and yeah. So those are fond memories of during the wartime when you were actually. Oh able to. my! Um, can we go back to talk about your childhood a little bit more? Um, I think you kind of missed over that section. So talking about we talk about what you said with your <coughs> with your siblings, how many siblings you have, and where you grew up, and like what it was like, and then why you enlisted. I didn't enlist. Or, sorry, I, you were. Yeah. I was drafted. Okay, so let's get in. Let's go back to start with. You want to start as a. Okay. You want to start as a first grader? <laughs> well, well maybe just zero. say maybe just say the year you were born and a little bit of what it was like growing up. Okay, born in nineteen thirty-three, and uh, and born and raised in a little German town. Bro, teachers, we had our teachers nuns. They when I had every year as I went to school. We had uh, nuns, and so we uh, we went on through, you know. And, and uh, the mysterious thing is that that I gotta bring up. My dad was a real strict man, but he went ahead and he flunked me, him over the teacher, keep him back. He flunked me in the first grade. And so I went ahead and uh, had two years of first grade. Went to high school, was a senior, that, and they were bussing these kids in from a smaller town to two different towns. And that's how I met my wife as a, soft, a freshman. And the, the big thing is, met her in there. Uh, she waited for me on the farm. I went ahead and she wrote to me, stayed at home, waited for me. And I, that's the only way I've ever, ever met her because we did not know nothing about the family. So I went ahead and, and that's how we met and that's how I went into service and by God we ended up pretty happy couple. We were married uh well now it would be sixty eight years. Sixty six years and three weeks we were married. I got thirty two great grandchildren, fifteen grandchildren and uh and such and then when I got out of service course not, uh, yeah, I went to Salt City Business College for one year to go ahead and through the service, of course. And I did that for one year. After that, her and I, she was 70 when I got married. But we moved from uh, Kansas, moved out here to Karate in 1956, and that's where we made our home, our children, our everything. So, uh, and Did the uh, service provide you with any expertise that you used afterwards in your career? Like? Well, being in uh, artillery, there's not much you can transfer into the uh, civilian life, what did you learn in the military that you might have been able to use? Well, I tell you what, see, before I left then, they went ahead and a lot of us went ahead and got sent to Hawaii, Oahu, mm. Hawaii. And that's where, uh, uh, that's where I came over, of course, for four months, they were mustering you out and getting you back to American life again. Sure. So I went ahead and, uh, yeah, I was there uh, about, about four months. I was there. In the meantime, 
I became the chief of fire and battery over the 105 howitzers in Hawaii for four months, training, mm -hmm. training these other uh, next group going in. Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah so mm -hmm. uh, it was interesting life, by golly. So uh, did you? Did they give you any medals or citations for your service while you were over there? I got some are paying it up there, do mm. huh? Oh yeah, but I got my wall full at home. Yeah, they I earned. Yeah, I earned, I earned all of them by God. Yeah, I got Excellent. a medal and they're in a case and everything. So we're gonna. Mm. We, in fact, we're now trying to go ahead. I'm not gonna be around long enough. They. Gave me a matter of time now. Mm. Say, yeah. So uh, um, Lizzie and I and the kids, we're going to go ahead and <clears throat> separate all my pictures, my medals, and all of oh, nice. that I have. So, Do you have pictures of yourself in uniform there, or your wife? Yes. Would yeah. you like to show those at all? Oh, yeah, we could yeah. show, that since we're talking about that at this time, maybe yeah, she can get that for you. That might... Might not be a bad, bad idea. Okay, honey, let me go ahead and get this over here. I can here. help you hold that up here if oh, you like. You bet. All right, let me put this over here. We can turn it around so they can get it. Um, oh. How's that? <laughs> can you receive that okay? Nah. Can you see that on the... So this is the Army and these are... Yeah, that's our group that when we... Split up in Camp Crowder, Missouri, to go ahead to go to basic training in Camp Zappy, Arkansas. That was a separation right there. Yeah, this is uh, one of my dear old friends. He was one of the three out of the 81. Yeah, he was, uh, yeah, Wayne Zimmerman. That's Wayne Zimmerman. It. Yeah. That was him, and uh, oh, this is really nicely done. Yeah, would be uh, okay. One and the only time I got off a of base to go into Fort Smith, Arkansas, and we had a party. I even slumped in there somewhere yeah. for a beer or something. Over there. But that was the only time I was out. Wow. Yeah. It was all. Not much time now to enjoy I'm, yourself. No, sir. So okay. This is in the field, huh? Yeah. I can't. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was out in the. This is. Pro... I think that was still basic training right okay. there. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Mm -hmm. Some of the. Fellows in basic training. Oh, my. Yeah. yeah, and I tell you what, we got to go ahead and uh, starting in basic training, then going overseas. Each of us got to pick three persons that you think would match with each yeah. other. And by gosh, and I knew something special with that one guy. And uh, but we hung together all through that. Happened to be after I got out of service, I got a hold of him. A minister, he became nine hundred people in his in his congregation. In his congregation, outstanding. Isn't that That's isn't that amazing. something? How you can pick <laughs> people, you know? Yeah, yeah. California. Oh, those are the ships. They're all marked. Yeah, they're the names are on there, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's ships. I was on five of them mm. through all of that. Yeah. January nineteen fifty four into Japan, as you said. Yeah. 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 It so was there's the one hundred fifth. This was a, This would be in uh, Korea. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Picture of the group. Yeah. There's some more transport. 
Yeah. Very nicely done. Yeah. That's my dear wife. Oh, yeah. all of them. Oh. I can't really see. Oh, there's your tents that you were talking about. There's show, shows 10 right in there. Mm. Yeah. Two oh, south. That was the front of the house, as you said. Yeah. Army buddies. Yeah, oh, my gosh. Yeah. 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 And the, and the guys' names, they happen to be from North Carolina. One was Haynes, and another one was Hayes. <laughs> yeah, and Haynes is the one that became that minister. I see. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. And it was Phillips as well. As oh, of, yeah. Part of the Four Musketeers. That's right? it. He was one of them. <laughs> yeah, Phillips. My golly. Heading home. Oh, my. Yeah. Man. Of Hawaii. Yeah. Yeah, I got... Uh, I got other books too with a lot of them pictures, but yeah, heading home, yeah. There you go. Yeah, it was. It was. So, uh, Hawaii. Um, pictures of uh, the beach. Ocean and the beach. One time in my life, even up to now, I was at the beach. Mm. One time. I never. I, we were allowed to when we in Hawaii. I went to the beach one time, never went back to the beach again. I I wanted freedom and everything, and I I got it, you know, so. That's but, great. Yeah. Let's see what we... That's mine. Okay. Yep, by gosh. Yep. Even had a picture. He became my friend at uh, Hawaii, and uh, that was his... Girlfriend when he came back, so he introduced me to her. Mm, very nice. California to Japan. Oh, yeah, that, that was the beginning of it. Yeah. Let's see here. These are certificates, and let's see if I missed one here. Nice. Oh, here we go. Yeah. To certify successful completion of the course and instruction. Okay. Oh, that was your Arkansas. That was in the... Camp Chaffee. Yeah. So these yeah. are all your certifi certifications. That I... Not a phony or a fake or whatever. Mm. Yeah. Boot camp again. So these are... Yeah. Uh, completed the course of instruction, basic training. All right. You bet. Very uh, nicely done. Very nicely. Your yeah. wife did a good job she there. She did a super job, yes. Yeah, so. But it is a different, different life, different world. I know it never, ever gave anybody any problems. I just, uh, just went through whatever they needed or wanted. You know, so. What kind of occupation did you have after you left the service? I had two, three different ones. Started out, of course, where do you start? But anyway, I ended up then in the warehousing. I was warehouse uh, and uh, a distribution manager for over 30 years. Oh. So I, that's who I Retired with, you know. Excellent. That was here in Denver? Yes. Hmm. Well, wasn't this just, well, in hmm. Englewood area. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you have any hobbies during that time period? By God, I had a few, but boy, my money was so tight. Hmm. You know, when I first went into the warehousing, it didn't take me about two or three months, and I was. Uh, I was one of the, uh, well, I would train. We had, back in them days, I had 42 Spanish guys oh. who were under me, and I, and then I had one guy that would translate for me. Mm -hmm. And so I was, I was doing that for about five years before I actually went into the warehousing and stuff. Oh, so, yeah. Oh, you know, a supervisor. Yeah. Trainer and but supervisor. I was, yeah. I had 42 men in charge of, and I 
they overpaid me. $3.35 have all of that, you know. I believe it. Oh, my God. Back in those that. days, yeah. Yeah, it was different, yeah. yeah so. well, it was very different. So, um, do you have, outside of your military service, is there any experience that you'd like to share with us that's particularly important to you? I got this year. Can you think of having that? children? Being a father? Being a father? Oh, yeah. You got that's, Father's Day coming up here. I guess that's what they tell me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I got a birthday coming up. Uh huh. In two weeks. Okay. And you had how many children? Four. Girls, boys? Yeah. Two? Uh, three, yeah. Alicia is the youngest, three boys and a girl. Yes. yes. And uh, that's how you came up with 16 grandchildren. That's very yeah, impressive. Uh, yeah. No, it was a lot of blessings. And I, mm. I look at uh, my Lord and Savior by God. I, I'm up there. I don't have to turn any pages back. I, I really had a good life with my family and friends and it is oh my it is just miracles happened mm. yeah and especially since i lost my wife you know i just of course you go a different route and i took care of my wife what is she how long would you say uh, yeah, totally they was the doctors were after me you cannot take care of her you're gonna wear yourself down. You're gonna die before she does. And but by God, I took care of her. I bathing, cleaning. Wow. And I done. I still got. Well, I had the apartment. I, well, I still in fact have it. Yeah, I done all of that. And up to here, just about two months ago, I was actually uh, still doing all my cooking. And and house cleaning and and mm. everything. It's just whatever I've done. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah I've done all of that by golly. So uh, now the service and your father and mom brought you up that way to take care of yourself and your others. Oh, definitely yes. Yeah, that's right. So, no, it's yeah. There's uh, history there, but by golly, will. Looking back, it ended out to be good history, all of it, you know. So uh, mm -hmm. I would just have to. So you've had a good journey, and one that uh, are there any lessons you'd like to share with the future generations? Well, yeah, you bet. <laughs> exactly right. And if you have some, this is the time to pass it on. Yeah, that's right. Oh, my. Yeah. Work hard and Work hard, worship yeah. the good Lord. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Yeah, it was rough, you know, with a young woman, 17 years, never been out. <clears throat> My wife never, ever had a date. You were the only one, me. huh? Wow. Yep, the only one, by God. And by God, look at the end, it all paid off. Worked that, out good. Yeah. That worked out great. Yeah. Uh, that's that's a quite the story and one that we're all happy that it went so well and can you can be proud of that uh, is uh, yeah very yeah, good. And what I like the kids now at that time it didn't really mean that much or everything, but by God now they all. All my kids, they see really what journey their mom and me went through to get through all of this here and get to where I ended up here by a guy. Yeah, it's uh, very impressive. A great life. Well, yeah. Elmer, we really appreciate you taking the time today to, to share your life story with us. Sure. And, uh, 
I, uh, I am very impressed with that and honored to have been able to interview you. So, And I'm honored for you guys to, to interview me. And it uh, means a lot, means a lot to me. And these kids, if they're going to be able to get maybe a clip or something like that, I want them, my kids, to go ahead and where they can listen to it and see it. Uh, that. Well, definitely, it's going to be on YouTube, I think. Okay, yeah, and we'll email it out to everybody. Well, I'll take your email, whatever email you want. Sure. Um, me let me shake your hand there, and thank you again for your time. So God bless you. God bless you as well. Thank you very much.